I might be beating a dead horse with this point versus vector thing, but I have to give some credit maybe to the graphics guys that what we're doing here is a three-dimensional transform. In fact, you see I had to actually go to the effort of building this 3D view of it so that we can see this 3D move going back and forth and we can understand that Z basis vector. This blue one right here is moving with the, or, or is controlling the X and Y position of the of the resulting house, okay? But when we go to 3D, when I say, when I go into 2D, I mean, go back to 2D, and let's bring this back to zero, and if I grab, sorry, I want to get these back to zero. If I grab this Z coordinate of this top vertice and I bring it out to a, a 10, notice nothing changes. Okay, if I go negative 10, nothing changes. Nothing, nothing will change, right? I can do that with all these, right? Nothing will change. What's happening as I grab these sliders and I move them around? Well, they're coming out further in the Z. If we go back into 3D view, oh wow, yeah, they're they're moving, right? If I if I do this, they're they're going further out on our Z basis vector there. Okay, but. But when we view in 2D, remember this graph, all my program does in this graph is it graphs the X and the Y coordinate. It doesn't graph the Z. There's no way I can graph the Z coordinate in two dimensions. Right? So this goes back to that term I keep throwing out, homogeneous coordinates. And I think I'll, uh, in the very near future, we'll do a more, little, more, few more videos on it. But... Uh, Cartesian coordinates, that's something you learn in your algebra classes. X and Y you're probably used to. It makes sense. You know, if I give you a coordinate 3, 2, you go over 1, 2, 3, and then we go up 1, 2, and you're right here. And so that I think that just naturally makes sense. It's simple to understand. But then all of a sudden we throw in this homogeneous word. And the way we teach, or what most computer graphics classes, the way they teach homogeneous coordinates is they do it in the sense of this dimension that you can't visualize. It's just there, and magical things happen. You can't touch it. You can't envision this dimension. And and uh, guess what? You can. You can't envision the dimension from four-dimensional to three-dimensional. But if you learn homogeneous in the context of three-dimensional to two-dimensional, as we're doing here, then the ideas make sense. And then when we go into 3D graphics, and we see the translation, like, oh, yeah, same thing from 4D to 3D as it is from 3D to 2D. Okay? Whew. All right. So maybe I'm beating a dead horse. Maybe I'm not. Let's talk about our unit tests. Hopefully you recall a few videos back we were trying to make these unit tests work. And I put those debugging tests down here, but I removed them offline. Sorry about that. And here's, here's our original test, though, with our original numbers. And I think we naively put a zero in here, if I remember right. That was the whole problem, and I've taken you through videos showing you why that's not going to pass, why that's not going to work. Um, so what do we need to do? Well, going back, let me just, I know I keep bringing this up, but if I, if I want these vectors to quote-unquote translate or move together like this, three dimensional, it's happening in three dimensions even though we're showing just the two dimensions of it. Um, what do I need to do? Well, if you remember from the previous videos, when I take this down to a zero, notice nothing's changing here. This guy is not getting further closer away from us in 2D because we're not graphing the 2D portion. But if I, if I take him to zero, all of a sudden he's not translating anymore. He's not doing what we'd expect him to do. But if I take this up to a one, then we've essentially put him in the same plane as all the other vertices, and then all they move together nice and translated, and so on and so forth. Um, <coughs> key concept. If you want to turn off translation, then set the last component to a 0. Otherwise, set it to a 1, or whatever value the other ones are set to. But the other ones should be set to a 1 as well. So we generally just say, to turn it on, set it to a 1. To turn it off, set it to a 0. All right. <coughs> well, let's turn it on. We need to come here to the Z component part of our vector 3d here and say one there and then um, also notice what, what what should we put down here what value should we put down here notice as we do the translation look at all the resulting z's here okay this this value is the resulting z of this vector uh, applied with this these basis vectors here so notice as I change the x coordinate 
All of them stay at 1. They're still stuck in that z equals 1 plane. And as I change the y coordinate, they're all stuck in that z equals 1 plane. And I'm never going to change the the z coordinate of our basis vector here, even though I could. Notice when I do, that, that does change. That pushes the plane that they all exist in out. Okay, I think we saw that in 3D. If we say side, that pushes them further out. Okay, but they're all being pushed together. Well, anyway, we're going to leave that at a 1. We'll always leave it at a 1. Keep things nice and convenient. So the resulting z value should always be a 1. Let's put a 1 there. Let's control F5. And build started. Build succeeded. All the tests pass. We're feeling good. Time to check in. Let me pause and check in. Okay, I think we are good to go. Now, uh, let's close the tests. We're good with the tests. Uh, the whole reason we're doing this. Oh, Nelly. So many videos just to describe. I want to put translation into this matrix. <laughs> All right, probably at this point you're thinking, Jamie, just add the ship position in. We've added enough. No, there's benefits to understanding this this Z coordinate homogeneous thing. That I'll, I'll do another video on homogeneous coordinates and what that really means. But you can think of it now. We're just using that Z coordinate to do 3D magic, and then we warp it to 2D space by just dropping the Z component. Or that, a, good, a better term for that is projection. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, um, I'm trying to put that translation directly here in the matrix operator. So what's the red squiggly here? I think I know why. Translate takes an X and a Y, and we're saying translate by the ship position, which we've made a vector three, I recall. Let me click on this and hit F12. Yes, we made it a vector three, even though we really, really should have dove, dove, maybe kept it a vector two. Why should we have kept it a vector two? Because we're just translating it by X and Y. We're not doing anything with Z, but that's just, how we chose to do it. And and later I'll show you how we can actually get away with doing a vector 2 instead of a vector 3. Ooh, I hope it didn't burn your brain there by saying that. But for now, we decided our translate function will take an x and a y. And I think for now I'm just going to stick with that. So let's do x, ship position dot y. And I think we're good to go. Uh, build, configuration manager, turn back on sandbox game. I want to build that. Control Shift B build and binary no operator which should be oh we haven't written a multiplication operator for two matrix 3Ds <laughs> you get so excited we were almost there to translate the ship we were almost there but now we got our uh, this won't take too long we'll do that in the next video then hopefully the video after that will actually translate our ship using this one matrix and no longer having to say ship position plus. Okay? Good.